this a lot. Okay, um, what I'd like to do is show you how to solve this, uh, this equation. What we have is we have variable n is on the left and it's on the right side. So um, whenever we're dealing with solving an equation, remember the one thing we gotta remember is what we wanna do is we wanna get n by itself. And we wanna say n is gonna equal this. So right now we have a, a little dilemma here because we have an n on the left side and an n on the right side. So what we need to do is we need to figure out a way to combine these n's together. So what I can do is I can say, well, um, I either want to solve for my n on the left or solve for my n on the right side. And usually it's always helpful a couple tips to look at. Um, one way is to always kind of, uh, one way is to get rid of the smaller of n's. So here you have a negative 30 and a negative 27. A lot of times it's helpful to get rid of the negative 30 first or to combine, or to move the negative, the smaller variable over to the other one because then you always get a positive answer. Um, however, in this case, a lot of times it's going to be easy, it's, this one, it'll be easier to move the 27 because if I move the 30, then I'm going to be left with zero and I'm still going to have to move something over to this left side anyway. So there's a lot of different ways you can solve these problems. Um, and really the best way is just to remember we need to get n equal. So we need to combine these two variables. So it doesn't matter which way I really do it, I'm going to choose to um, get rid of my negative 27. So to do that, I'm going to add a 27. And remember, by the addition property of quality, whenever you add on one side of the equation, you have to add on the other side of the equation. Now, what I mean by getting rid of it, what I did is this is a negative 27n. When I add a, 20, a positive 27n, I'm left with a 0n. Well, 0 times anything is going to give you 0. 0 minus 63 is still going to give you just a negative 63. So that's why we don't even bother writing it. We just write down what else it equals. So a negative 30n plus 27 is a negative 3n equals a negative 63. Now, we're almost at to my n by itself. So to get my, to undo, I'm um, oh, sorry, now I need to look at what's happening to my n. I can see that now my n is being multiplied by negative 3. So to undo it being multiplied by negative 3, I'm going to divide by negative 3. And division property equality says to divide on both sides. So a negative 3 divided by negative 3 is going to give you a positive 1 times n. All right? Now, 1 times n is always going to equal n. So we don't usually write that 1 there. That equals a negative 63 divided by 3. Well, you know 3 goes into 30 10 times. So it's going to go into, I'm sorry, 3 goes into 30 10 times. It's going to go into 60 20 times. And it's going to go into 63 21 times. And since these are both negatives, it's going to give me a positive 21. So therefore, if you look at my answer, what I've done is I've systematically received it as a um, as my n all by itself. Now I have a little room over here. Let's just pretend for those of you that wanted to do it the other way. All right. If you wanted to solve for this way, you want to get rid of the 30n. What you do is you add a 30n, and what you get is 0 equals 3n minus 63. So then we'd still have to now get something over by the zero, get our n by itself. So what I could do is I could add the 63 to get rid of that with the n. So I have 63 equals 3n. Then I can divide by 3, and I get 21 equals n. Either way, if you notice, my n is still by itself, and I still get the exact same answer. So whichever way you want to solve for it, um, just make sure you're following the rules of equality by doing everything on both sides and, um, and combine your variables together. And that's it.